Hey guys, it's Mike here, and today I'm going to be giving you my breakdown and analysis of the next episode preview for Dragon Ball Super Episode 63, and discussing what I think is going to be happening in the series moving forward, or at least in the coming episode, and also going to be talking about, you know, some of the revelations or some of the things that were introduced in the previous episode, and how they may pay off in this episode, and so I'm going to be going through this preview, stopping it as it goes along and giving my thoughts now if you want to see the whole preview you could go watch the episode because that's not what the breakdown is for and I can't just show you the entire preview because I like my channel and I don't feel like it being taken down for copyright also I'm probably going to be talking about some spoilers in this video too because you know Toei doesn't really want us to enjoy the show I guess as it happens so they released more spoilers for it so if you don't want to hear the spoilers for what's going to be happening in the next episode of Dragon Ball Super, then you can just go down below in the comments section and let me know what you think is going to happen, as well as clicking on the notifications button so that you could see all my videos in the future so that you don't have to miss out on any of the content I provide. So let's get into this breakdown and this preview. Okay, so of course we see Future Trunks is fighting against Black and Zamasu, and we see this awesome scene in which it seems like Trunks and Zamasu are having this awesome sword battle, you know, like, Zamasu has that, you know, psionic uh, blade of his, like, straight out of X-Men, you know, but it's, I guess, made of key as well, maybe it's made of god key, you know, how is Trunks' sword able to stand any chance? I know that, you know, in the manga it was the Z-Sword, um... But at least in this case, it seems to be just a sword. We haven't really gotten any indication that it's anything otherwise, but it would be cool for that kind of explanation. Oh, that's why it's so powerful. And some reason Deborah was able to break it. Who knows? But yeah, it seems like they're going back and forth. Trunks, right in this scene, might not look like he's doing so hot. But uh, the fact that Trunks is holding them off at all is pretty awesome. Also, look at this right here. It looks like, if you could see this pose right here, look at that. Now, what is that very reminiscent of? Is it something, perhaps, that his own dad, Vegeta, has used in the past? Well, it looks exactly like he's using the Gallic Gun, or the Gallic Ho, if we want to be, you know, true to the Japanese. And that's pretty cool. I mean, Trunks used the Masenko from Gohan that was taught to him by Piccolo. He's used the Final Flash in this arc as well, and now he's using the Gallic Gun. I mean, that's just awesome. I can't wait to actually see that happen. It seems like, honestly, just looking at this, it seems like it's a night and day comparison from last week's episode in terms of animation, in terms of action. And I guess in terms of the overall, you know, execution of it, because it seems like stuff is really going to happen this episode. But look here, it says, Goku says to Vegeta, Vegeta, I'm leaving black to you. So it seems like everything in this episode might be building up to Vegeta once again fighting against black. Now, I don't understand how Vegeta could have gotten powerful enough in the short period of time he's been on Earth to, I don't know, stand any chance against black on his own. I mean, he got beat by black the first time. And then Goku got, like, annihilated by Black in the last fight, and, you know, it seems like it might be, you know, reasonable, I guess, for Vegeta to get a little bit more powerful, but I don't know what kind of training he could have gone through. This is why sometimes it almost feels like maybe they should, you know, show a little bit more, or at least put a little bit more in there. I know that Vegeta might have been going to the Room of Spirit in Time or the Hyperbolic Time Chamber in the last episode, um, so that could be a little bit of an explanation as to how he got a little bit stronger, but as we know, before they went the last time, they went for three years, him and Goku, uh, Vegeta was saying that they're basically nearing their limits, and that they're probably not going to get that much stronger, so, I mean, if Vegeta gets a little bit stronger and he could fight Black, it seems like the difference between their power is truly negligible, um... But yeah, as we see in the next time on Dragon Ball Super, don't defile Saiyan cells. The curtain rises on Vegeta's intense battle. And as we know, Vegeta, you know, is going to intensely fight Black and Zamasu. You know, it seems like it's going to be awesome. I mean, look at this awesome shot of Future Trunks, you know, blasting uh, Black straight into the ground. Um, 
you know, he's not he's not very friendly with uh, this character now, is he? As uh, you know, when <laughs> Kwame and I would always say, he's not being very friendly now, is he, Quinn? You know, <laughs> um, but yeah, like thinking about this and going back now, there's one big thing that they have not shown at all in this episode yet, or in this preview, and that is the Mafuba and the application of it. Now, again, I'm going to be talking about spoilers. As we know, when it comes to spoilers coming up in the next episodes, uh, it seems that Zamasu is going to be breaking not only the seal that you require for the Mafuba, but perhaps the jar itself. And it seems like maybe Goku is not even going to be able to get the chance to use the Mafuba on him in the first place. And Trunks may need to use some sort of special technique, perhaps, in order to fix the seal so that Goku can use it. Because as we know in the actual manga for Dragon Ball, when Tien showed up in order to try and seal away King Piccolo, also a green villain who is you know, has some sort of wish on the dragon to make himself eternally young, um, although he didn't have the true immortality like Zamasu does, uh, Tien showed up and the jar was broken, so he couldn't even use it in the uh, manga. In the anime, he got to use it, but it didn't work because he used it on Drum, and uh, Drum wasn't exactly sealed away either. You know, it didn't really work out very well in the end for him. <clears throat> So, you know, it could be a redo of that situation. You know, a lot of people don't seem to know this, but Toriyama did go back and read the whole manga before he started doing some of this stuff with Dragon Ball Super, he even said in an interview. So it's possible that he's taking a lot of inspiration from the King Piccolo arc, and this is certainly a very dark arc that, you know, makes sense. I mean, the combination of the King Piccolo arc and the Cell Saga is excellent you know like awesome inspirations Toriyama to choose from in this case because both of those are just top notch in terms of your uh in terms of your repertoire and your resume when it comes to being a manga ka artist but you know the big question is are Zamasu and Black truly going to be sealed away by the Mafuba are they actually going to lose to that move are they really going to be defeated by it and honestly at this point i'm starting to think no and the reason why is because there's a lot of elements that toriyama has hinted at so far in this arc that doesn't really seem like have really come to fruition for example one of the biggest elements that i feel like has not even really been touched upon yet but i feel like he's probably going to play a big part in the ending is fusion and you know as we know zamasu and black both have earrings and we even see it in this picture right here black has an earring right on this ear zamasu has an earring on the other ear you know, like, earrings have played a big part in this arc so far, and we saw in the previous arc that, you know, the Kaioshin and Kabito defused, okay? Well, if we look at Dragon Ball Super in the history of this show up until right now, we know that this show seems to have a kind of tendency of foreshadowing things before they happen, like an arc ahead of time. For example, in the Battle of Gods arc, Vegeta was looking and watching the fight between Goku and Beerus. You know, it didn't seem like he was really having as much trouble as, say, we, you know, like the others were having. And Beer Vegeta also raged out and was able to fight Beerus. Well, in the next arc, we see that, you know, Vegeta is trained with Whis. We see that Vegeta and Goku are trained. Both of them are able to level up enough to where they could sense gods, where they could actually have God Key in their Super Saiyan Blue forms, so on and so forth. Well, in that next arc as well, Champa randomly shows up. Now, why is Champa showing up? Well, in the next arc, as we saw in the Universe 6 arc, whoa, it's Champa and Vados. They're showing up again officially this time, I guess. And, you know, in that arc, they're talking about we've only gathered a few of them so far, whatever it was. Well, then in the next one, they just happen to have six of the Super Dragon Balls and they want to do a tournament. Well, in that arc as well, we found out that Kabito and the Kaioshin defuse. Well, in this arc, look at all these earrings. Look at all this symbol uh, symbolism between the two of them being two halves of the same person. Even the last episode, as we saw, um, they had the split screen where Zamasu and Black were both on different sides with the earrings on the different, you know, sides of their... Well, they're on the same side, but if they were to put them together on the different sides, they would actually fuse into one being. They even said when Zamasu was being shown how to use the earring and the time ring by Gawasu earlier in this arc, because Gawasu was dumb and he felt the need to actually show an evil person how to do this stuff, and he picked him in the first place, um... 
he, they were like, oh, well, if we put on the other ear, we'll fuse, right? And he's like, yeah. And then it's like, you know, maybe we shouldn't really do that. Well, everything seems to be foreshadowing and building for the two of these characters to fuse. So perhaps if Goku actually does succeed in using the Mafuba, you know, real to real, a friend of mine on YouTube, which you could go check out his channel and MJ, you know, at Geekless, you could check out both their channels. Um, they had this kind of theory, which I think is a very big possibility that if the two of them, Black and Zamasu, are sealed away with the Mafuba, we don't really know what it's like inside of the seal, but if both of them have the earrings and they both fuse, it's a possibility that the two of them are so powerful that they can completely override the power and the magic of the Mafuba, similar to how Goku Super Saiyan 4 in Dragon Ball GT was so powerful, it actually negated the magic of the Black Star Dragon Balls, which is why he took on the adult form only in that form. So I think it's a strong possibility, but at the same time, if they break out, what what's going to happen, you know? Well, again, Kabito and the Kaioshin defused, so it's entirely possible that Goku and Vegeta could be getting some earrings so that they could fuse together. But then again, there's Gawasu. And as we saw in the previous episode, at the end of the episode, Gawasu was talking to Beerus and Whis, and he was saying, oh, I'm going to take full responsibility for what's going on. You know, he was my student, my apprentice, essentially. He was the one who was, I mean, this animation looks great, by the way. Like, look at this shot, just with Mai looking through this, you know, sniper rifle, which I'm sure in the in the uh, English you know, dub, they'll probably replace with the water super soaker or something like that if it airs on Cartoon Network again, well, you know, during the day. We'll have to see. Um... But, you know, it seems like Goku and Vegeta may very well fuse. I mean, you know, we might see Vegeta again. We might even see Gogeta. I obviously Vegeta probably hasn't learned that technique, but they were trained for three years. Like there's so much stuff they could shove into that three year gap, uh, during the, you know, in the time chamber that we just did not see that could lead to them giving up, you know, creating all these new plot elements. So I feel like what's going to happen is highly possible is that we're going to see fusion in this arc and it's going to play a big part in the finale now again is zamasu black black masu zamasu uh zamasu black black zamasu whatever you want to call him nwo zamasu you know wolf pack with the red with the red skin and everything in this case um is he going to still have immortality like you know, say, Zamasu does. I mean, they are still technically Zamasu. Well, it's possible that they're not going to have immortality after all once they finish fusing, which would be a kind of a funny and ironic way to end it. Or, you know, maybe Daishinkan will show up. He'll, you know, reveal he has reality warping powers that supersede the power of the Super Dragon Balls, and he'll utterly wreck the living crap out of Black Zamasu. And I'll be eating popcorn and drinking, you know, uh, some soda or Coors Light or something like that. That, you know, and uh, I'll be looking at it and I'll just say, okay, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad of a conclusion at all, Toriyama. I like it. I like it a lot. I don't even like Coors Light. Anyway, this has been another video in which I was giving you my predictions and breakdown for the Dragon Ball Super Episode 63 preview and for what's to come. Let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Do you agree with my predictions i suppose and my uh, do you actually you know what are you looking forward to in the upcoming episode as well also what do you think is going to happen because again those are my predictions and what i think is going to happen but you might have some kind of crazy other idea that might happen maybe you know king furry is going to come out of retirement reveal he is a uh, god of universe 10 or something like that maybe something crazy like that i don't know but let me know your own thoughts down below in the comment section and don't forget to put down below a hashtag Dragon Ball Super to let me know you actually stayed until the end of this video, which, you know, I've been doing hashtags for a while now. I decided to actually mention them because I know a lot of you people who watch these videos might be doing them when you're at work or on, you know, on your way to work or something like that where you can't really see them. So I'm going to mention them just so that you can, you know, know to let me know that you actually watched it so I can understand how much of my videos you actually like to watch. So let me know your own thoughts down below. And as I always say, stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future.